In this section of the RubyScript's videos, I'm going to be covering the Drop RubyScript and the Randor RubyScript, both of which are free and can be found at smustard.com. Okay, uh, let's go over and uh, I'm going to go over the Randor Ruby. Uh, Randor Ruby basically takes any group uh, or component or collection of group and components and randomly changes the shape and rotation of uh, those components or groups. And that's particularly useful when you're talking about uh, things like trees where you want things to look randomized. So let me just show you that right now. I'm going to go ahead and select all the trees that are here on this model. And I'm just going to go up to the Randor plugin. And there you go. They're all just uh, randomly changed in scale and size and in rotation. Although rotation you won't be able to tell here because these are all 2D um, elements here, 2D components that actually face, uh, that, that have that billboard effect. But if you, you can use this on uh, 3D trees as well. The second part of this video, I'm, I'm going to show you how to use the drop tool. And uh, one, one of the few things that, are, that may be time consuming when you're dealing with landscape is to place these trees individually on this undulating surface here. It's fine if it was a flat surface, it'd be pretty easy to do, but uh, you have this, these two berms here that undulate back and forth, and um, I'm going to show you using the drop tool how you can actually quickly populate this whole area and have these trees um, uh, positioned in according to elevation as well as the XY. Okay, so let's go ahead and just I'm going ahead and again and select these trees. And what I'm going to do here is just lift them up and drape them over uh, the, the area of interest here. And now that they've been selected, I'll go ahead and right click and say drop at intersection. And you see that wherever there was actual geometry underneath those components, it will drop the geometry, uh, I should say, drop the components directly onto the, the underlying geometry at the correct elevation. And now all I have to do is just select the, the uh, items I don't want. And perhaps this one here. And there you go. So that's the Randor and the Drop Ruby script. In this segment of the RubyScript videos, I'll go over the Weld Ruby, which can be found at smustard.com. So what the Weld Ruby does is that it joins multiple line segments and creates a single polyline. And why is that important to you? Uh, well, let's just show you here. Um, you may have noticed a few oddities in SketchUp when you're extruding. Uh, you might see that when you're extruding a, a curve like this, that you suddenly see all the facets in the extrusion. Also, uh, let me go ahead and just double click here on this line segment. Um, if you do a follow me, you might see all these facets along uh, this type of a follow me extrusion. And the reason is that these individual uh, the edge of this circle here is made up of individual line segments, as is this path here. Individual line segments there. Okay, and now let's go ahead and just select um, just the edges there along the circle and see what happens when I extrude it if it's a single polyline. So uh, I've gone ahead and I've selected all these individual line segments. I go to the plugin and find weld. It's going to ask me if I want to. Uh, find a face for this curve I don't at this time and now if I single click on there you'll see that it acts as one line and take a look at what happens when I extrude this up notice that it that it automatically smooths out that surface uh, the facets are still there but it automatically softens and smooths that that into one surface let's try it again here on this follow me path again it's made up of individual line segments and if I double click on here, triple click, I'll select all of them, go up to the plugins menu, choose weld, 
And now I'll single click to see that yes, it is one polyline. And I'll go ahead and use the follow me tool. And notice that it automatically smooths it out. Again, I could have, if, if those facets do show up, uh, I can go ahead and use the smooth and soften tool uh, to get the, uh, the look that I want. But uh, this just helps out and makes things a little bit more efficient. Another reason why you might use the, um, the well tool is you may have noticed that in some of the rendering styles, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, let me go ahead and br bring a style over here. Um, when it's when you're looking at a model in a certain style, you may notice that uh, you might get some unwanted sketchiness. Okay, and in this style, it, it's causing a a mark or a sketchy look every time there's a vertice. And you notice here, this is made up of individual line segments, as is this one here. Okay. If you want to make this look, look a little bit cleaner, then you'll want to make it one polyline. So let me go back and actually go back to the original rendering style. I'm going to select that edge, go to weld, and notice that now it's one considered one polyline. Okay. And let's go back to that graffiti, uh, graffiti style. And now you can see that's a lot crisper, okay? Unlike this edge here. So we'll go ahead and just correct, possibly correct that one up right there. And there you go. Okay, so that's the weld ruby. In this section of the RubyScripts video, I will go over the path copy RubyScript that is available at the Ruby Library Depot. So what the path copy Ruby does is it uh, distributes groups of components along a path either by uh, line segment, uh, the vertices of each line segment, or by a predetermined uh, distance. So let's go ahead and uh, this is the path I'm going to distribute this tree component upon, okay, across. So here's the line segment here. And one thing that it, the, the path copy Ruby um, asked for, it, it has to be one single line segment or one polyline. So um, I'm going to use another Ruby script called the Weld Ruby. And this uh, Ruby was actually covered in a different video. Uh, more than welcome to take a look at that. But um, what I'm going to do here is select individual line segments here that create the path. I'm going to go ahead and say weld. And now it's going to treat this as just one path. Okay, I just clicked once here. And now that I have that, um, I'm going to go ahead and distribute this tree uh, along this path around the perimeter of this uh, front yard here, this courtyard. So um, first I'm going to select the path, go to the plugins menu, Say copy along path, and here you have the options of either copying the path along the nodes or the endpoints of the of the uh, path, or I'm going to use the in this case I'm going to use the spacing option. And it says right here in the lower right hand corner, 10 feet. That sounds good to me. And now I'll go ahead and select the component itself. And wow, look at that! It uh, distributed these trees. Uh, 10 feet apart, and to prove that, let me go ahead and um, I'm going to take the center of this one here and go to the center here. And let me just take the uh, tape measure tool, and you'll see oops, hold on one second that if I go from here to this endpoint here, it says 10 feet. So um, these trees are 10 feet apart, and that is the path copy tool.